news is always happening. We have it covered for you with John Justice, morning 6 till 10. On 1041 The Truth. Tucson's News Talk. 936. 71 degrees outside right now. James T. Harris, live from Washington, D.C., coming up in about one half hour from now. He's at their Hold Their Feet to the Fire event going on. Talk Radio Row in Washington, D.C. Today and tomorrow, put on by the Federation for American Immigration Reform. I'm sure you have all... When I was there a couple of years ago, we had a ton of great guests at the event, and I'm sure it's going to be no different with... Uh, with James coming up in a half hour from now. So this is uh, this is funny. I had a friend of the show, Anna, uh, <laughs> sent over an email. And it was in regards to just political events, and it was focusing on Ron Barber. So I hit the link, and it actually took me over to the, to, the, uh, to the Arizona Daily Star. It's got a list of the political events coming up. <laughs> there's, some funny, there's some funny items of note on here, though. So uh, let's see. What's today? Today's the 8th, right? Oh, this one passed! Bummer. So on the 7th, the Democrats of, uh, Democrats of Greater Tucson hosted Anne Eve Peterson, president of the Arizona Education Parent Network. She was talking about the one-cent sales tax that's supposed to expire. Um, you know, she's more activist. She's just masquerading as, as a school advocate. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Uh, we got a brown bag lunch on the 9th with Mark Napier. He's a, uh, a new Republican candidate in the race for Pima County Sheriff. Uh, this one made me laugh a little bit. On the 9th, the Northside Democrats Club will be hosting City Councilman Steve Kozachik at its lunchtime meeting at the Red Line Sports Grill. That's the <coughs> Northside Democrats Club hosting Steve K. Yeah. <laughs> The one that I wanted to point out, though, and this is more just for my enjoyment, is that coming up on the 14th, which was supposed to be the day, or is the day, of the veil debate that Ron Barber is refusing to take part in, the Democrats of Oro Valley are presenting Ron Barber, candidate for District 8, at 7 o'clock at the Oro Valley Library. Well, that's within walking distance of my house. Maybe I'll have to go visit. I wonder if Ron Barber will still do it if I'm in the room. Is he just afraid? Will he? Will, well, I mean, that's a question. I mean, is he just fearful of being in any room with conservatives? Or is it just Jesse Kelly? Maybe it's a height thing. Maybe it's people of a certain height we can't share the room with. I don't know. I mean, my questions will be answered. I'll have to go and visit. the. Uh, we, go, we go there. Well, well, Melinda goes there. She's a big reader. She's one of those people who reads books all the time. Readers. She does it all the time. She, for enjoyment, no less. I know. I'll often come home and she'll be sitting on the couch. The boys will be in their room playing and she's sitting there reading a book. Really? Where'd you put my wife? Um, anyway, she runs a lot of books out of the Oro Valley Library. So perhaps I should make a visit to go see. I'm, I'm tall. I'm not as tall as Jesse Kelly, but... All right, so apparently we're fat. And actually, I'm looking at all three of us. Phone screener, uh, Ross, myself, and even you, producer Tony. If you go by body mass index, we're all three of us. We're, we're obese, no matter how hard we try. It's part of the problem when, when you look at these obesity numbers. Okay, is the body, ma it's, the body mass index is is much to blame on this. It's a lot like the serving sizes on meals that they give you. I mean, so much of it depends on size and who you are. The, I mean, the body mass index, you know, they would have everybody looking like Lance Armstrong, and if not, you're obese by their own definitions. A new forecast. We now have an obesity forecast. Do you have to become a obesity urologist for that? I made up a word. <laughs> a new forecast on America's obesity crisis has health experts fearing a dramatic jump in health care costs if nothing is done to bring 
the epidemic under control. Put that Twinkie down! Forecast calls for 10 Oreos and a tall glass of milk. That sounds good, doesn't it? You know, I could go for I can go for a ding dong. I should treat myself. Yeah. yeah. You know what you do with the ding dong? I haven't done this in a while. You know what you do with the ding dong? Okay. You take the ding dong and you bite just a little bit out, a little corner out, just enough to expose the cake. You dump it into a glass of milk. You will let the, the cake absorb all the milk into the ding dong. And you can tell when it's done just by the weight. You get a pretty good gauge that your ding dong is now milk filled and then you enjoy it. I do suggest doing it over a trash can or a sink because it tends to leak out once you. Part of the fun though. <clears throat> I'm doing nothing to help the obesity forecast, by the way. <laughs> a new projection released yesterday warns that 42% of Americans may end up obese by 2030. 11% could be severely obese, adding billions of dollars to healthcare costs. As of 2010, about 36% of adults, they say, were obese, which is roughly 30 pounds over a healthy weight. Well, see, again, 30 pounds over a healthy weight. It's just about in 6% were severely obese, which is 100 or more pounds over a healthy weight. You know, when, when, did, um, when did Babe Ruth, when was it, what, did anybody know, anybody give me top of their head year, Babe Ruth, when he played baseball? Yeah, well, yeah, what year? What era? You can type it over. I can't. I don't. It's, Ross is talking at me through glass and <laughs> apparently forgot that I don't know how to read lips. I bring it up because it always makes me laugh. Did they, did they talk about obesity back when Babe Ruth played? Because he was a kind of a fat tub of goo. <laughs> Do they talk about obesity in football? Because those linemen, right? I mean, those guys are... Just saying. Yeah, you know what? They start winning the war on obesity, and we're going to end up with really, really crappy football. <laughs> Who wants to watch a team of skinny linemen? <laughs> 20s and 30s, right. Yeah, yeah. All right. The obesity problem is likely to get much worse without major public intervention. No, no. That's what they're talking about. Put down that pizza. This according to uh, Eric... Finkelstein. Of course his name is Finkelstein, right? He's a health economist at Duke University. The increase in obesity's rate would mean 32 million more obese people within two decades. That's on top of the almost 78 million people who are already obese, obese in 2010. You see, the problem with this is they're trying to predict the obesity becoming worse. We're not talking, they're not talking about the number of people that are obese now by their definitions, they're trying to forecast out people that are thin now that are going to become obese. I mean, this is, this is the next phase in taking away freedoms and liberties and changing menus, not based off of free market principles, but, but based off of government intervention or the fear of such. I've got a story here coming up. They're talking, there's a, there's, I mean, it's already underway. They're making the argument that the extra weight takes a huge toll on health, okay? And I'm not saying it doesn't, but the problem is there isn't anything that they're going to be able to do about it without taking away freedoms and liberties. You know, and how bad is the problem, really? How much of this is because we've become such a nanny society that the backlash is people going, you stop telling me how to eat. Because all you're doing is making me hungry. You want to know how, how ridiculous it's gotten? Bake sales, right? Bake sales are a standby when it comes to schools that need money. Cash-strapped classrooms need extra supplies. PTAs, booster clubs do what? Bake sales. What do they sell? Sugary confections. Side note, I saw a story this morning. Pizza cupcakes. Now, you're not talking about sugar in there. I'm talking about pizzas that fit into the cupcake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was... It was early in the morning, and it was too early to be getting that hungry, by the way. Okay, so, bake sales. Back to this. Cookies, right? Cupcakes, things of this nature. Because people want them. 
They will now be outlawed from public schools as of August 1st as part of a new no-nonsense uh, nutrition standards, forcing fundraisers back to the blackboard to cook up alternative ways to raise money for kids. This comes out of Boston. They are banning bake sales. Because apparently if we get rid of the bake sales, the kids won't be fat anymore. At a minimum, the clampdown targets so-called doing that thing with my fingers, competitive foods, those sold or served during the school day in hallways, cafeterias, stores, and vending machines outside the regular lunch program, including bake sales, holiday parties, and treats dish out to reward academic achievement. State officials are also pushing schools to expand the ban 24-7 to include evening, weekend, and community events such as banquets, door-to-door -door candy sales, and football games. The Department of Public Health and Education contend that clearing tables of even whole milk and white bread is necessary to combat an obesity epidemic affecting a third of the state's 1.5 million students. These idiots actually believe that getting rid of the bake sales, getting rid of whole milk, trampling on freedom and liberty, and taking away the ability of these schools to make money through free market principles is actually going to make the little fat kids thin. You're listening to The John Justice Show on 104.1 The Truth, Tucson's News Talk FM.